All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be proving to you guys that pi is equal to three. So as you guys probably already know, pi is an irrational number, meaning it doesn't have a whole number value and it's actually equal to 3.14159 and on and on and so forth forever. So that's why it's an irrational number. It's to just don't stop going. So in this video, I'm going to be proving to you guys that pi is actually equal to 3 and not the irrational number that we all know it is. So what I'm first going to do is start with the statement x is equal to pi plus 3 over 2. So all I'm doing is I'm giving a value to a variable which is completely illegal, which is completely legal. So now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2. So I get 2 times x is equal to pi plus 3 over 2 times 2. Now, 2 times x is equal to 2x. So I get 2x is equal to, these two 2s cancel out, pi plus 3. So I get 2x is equal to pi plus 3. And now from here, I'm going to multiply both sides by pi minus 3. So I have pi minus 3 times 2x is equal to pi plus 3 times pi minus 3. Now, pi plus 3 times pi minus 3 I'm going to distribute the pi so I get pi squared plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, which they just simply cancel out, plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, these two cancel out, and then I have minus 9 at the end. So this is, I can just say this is pi squared minus 9, and for my left hand side, I can distribute the 2x so I get 2x pi minus 6x. And now from here, I'm going to add x squared on both sides. So I have x squared plus 2x pi minus 6x is equal to pi squared minus 9 plus x squared. And let me just reorder this real quick. I'm going to write this as x squared minus 6x plus 9, so I'm going to add 9 on both sides, is equal to x squared minus 2 pi x, so I'm going to subtract 2 pi x on both sides, and at the end, plus pi squared. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared. And now x squared minus 6x plus 9, this factor is out into x minus 3 squared. And x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared is the same thing as x minus pi squared. So I have x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus pi squared. And now, I want to cancel these two squares, so I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So now the square root of x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus 3, and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus pi. So I get x minus 3 is equal to x minus pi. So now I'm going to cancel these two x's out by subtracting x on both sides. So now I get negative 3 is equal to negative pi, and now, if I multiply both sides by negative 1, I get pi is equal to 3. So, there you have it. I just proved that pi is equal to 3. So now, where did I go wrong? Because obviously we know that pi is not equal to 3. So where did I go wrong? Well, I actually went wrong on this step right here where I said that the square root of x minus 3 squared and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus 3 and x minus pi, respectively. Well, this is actually not true, 
the square root of x minus 3 squared isn't equal to x minus 3, is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. And same goes with the square root of x minus pi squared. It's not equal to x minus pi. It's equal to the absolute value of x minus pi. So the reason this is so important is because now I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi or also negative x minus 3 is equal to positive x minus pi since we're taking the absolute value of these two. So if we want to solve x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi, we're going to have to first distribute the negative sign. So I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x plus pi. So now if I add x on both sides, it's to cancel out. So I get 2x is equal to 3 plus pi. And x is equal to 3 plus pi over 2, which going back is what we started with. So there you have it. That is something really important to know that the absolute value is, or sorry, the square root of a square isn't just the normal version, it's the absolute value of that. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be proving to you guys that two plus two is equal to five. So to do this proof, What I'm first going to do is start with a true statement that 0 is equal to 0, which is obviously a true statement because any number is equal to itself. Now from here, what I'm going to do is rewrite 0 on my left hand side as 20 minus 20 and rewrite the 0 on my right hand side as 25 minus 25. So now I get 20 minus 20 is equal to 25 minus 25, which is again a true statement because 20 minus 20 is zero and 25 minus 25 is also zero. Now from here, I'm gonna rewrite 20 as four times five. So now I get four times five minus four times five is equal to 25. I'm gonna rewrite this as five times five. So I get four times five minus four times five is equal to five times five minus five times five. And now if I have something in the form a times b minus a times b is equal to b times b minus b times b, which is this form, well notice how we can change the, we can like simplify this by factoring out a greatest, the greatest common factor. So for my left hand side, we have a greatest common factor of either A or B because both of them are in both terms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this as A times B minus B. Basically I factored out A. Now for my right hand side, all we have is B because that's the only term for my right hand side. So I'll just factor out b, so I get b times b minus b. So now in the case of this, for my left hand side, I'm going to factor out 4. So I get 4 times 5 minus 5, which is equal to, for my right hand side, I'm going to factor out 5. So I get 5 times 5 minus 5. So now I have four times five minus five is equal to five times five minus five. And what we can do over here is if I have something in the form a times b minus b is equal to b times b minus b, we'll notice how we can just cancel these two out, meaning that a is equal to b. So in this case, I have four times five minus five is equal to five times five minus five. We divide both sides by five minus five. And these two cancel out, these two cancel out and I'm left with four is equal to five. Now, going back to our original equation, I said that I was gonna prove that two plus two is equal to five, right? Well, what is four equal to? Four is equal to two plus two. So I get two plus two 
is equal to 5. So I just proved that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. And now I know what you're thinking. This is, mathematically, this is mathematically incorrect, right? How can 2 plus 2 equals 5 when 2 plus 2 is equal to 4? Well, look back here and try to figure out where I made an error. So the error is actually right here in this step where I divided both sides by 5 minus 5. So let me write this right here. I have 4 times 5 minus 5 is equal to 5 times 5 minus 5, right? Well, instead of just going on and dividing both sides by 5 minus 5, what is 5 minus 5? 5 minus 5 is equal to 0, right? So this is basically 4 times 0 is equal to 5 times 0. And then now, if I divide, if I try to divide both sides by 0, well, 0 divided by 0, that is not equal to 1. 0 divided by 0, that's indeterminate. So we can't, we can't actually cancel these out because if we cancel it out, we're implying that 0 divided by 0 is equal to 1, which is wrong. So that's actually where I made the mistake when I canceled out the 5 minus 5s. I wasn't allowed to do that because that's basically dividing 0 by 0, and that is against the laws of mathematics. So this means that 2 plus 2 is not equal to 5. So, yeah.